Welcome back to Paradise Pond. As you can tell, I've sifted a lot of dirt this summer and now it's the fall and I can start planting in it and that makes it all worthwhile. Some people keep a journal of what they plant when and where, but I'm going to do a video journal and make it public so that you can see what I plant if you're interested. And so the first thing I'm going to plant is this espelier tree. It's an apple tree and on it is grafted three different apples. So I've got a September Ruby, a Parkland Apple, and a Goodland Apple. If you watched my video from this spring when I planted the apple tree, my formula was a granite boulder that provides minerals for the tree, and then some biochar, which is good for water retention, alfalfa pellets for nitrogen, bone meal for roots, lots of manure. I'll dump it all in. And then a new product. Well, first I gotta loosen these roots up. You'll notice I try to dig a square hole so that the roots don't get root bound. Anyway, loosen up the roots a bit. It's really not that bad of a bound up. All right, so a new product I'm trying is this mycorrhizal growth enhancer. They say it's supposed to be really good. So I'll put some in the bottom. It's supposed to come in contact with the roots. So in the bottom, get the tree positioned how you want it. <laughs> Rock is a little bit in the way. There. All right. And then rub some more of this mycorrhizae on the root system itself. Just rub it on the root ball. And it takes about a, a cup and a half per tree. Backfill it. Stand back and make sure it's pointing in the right direction. Oh, I want it turned a little bit. There. I think that's pretty good. And then lots of water. That is going to be one happy, happy tree. <laughs> Next I'll be planting this fig tree. I've never grown a fig tree before, so I'm really excited to try this out. I bought it locally and they assured me it would grow in this climate. It is cold hardy. So I hope I'm just not burying $30 in the soil. <laughs> this is the warmest spot in my garden right now. It's got this big rock that will absorb the sun's warmth and hopefully reflect that onto the plant. So give it a shot. Same formula as the other one. The last tree that my garden bed has room for is this pear tree. And it has four different pears grafted onto it. So this is again a first for me. So it has a summer crisp, a gold spice pear, a yuri pear, and a Flemish beauty.
really good reason why the fall is a good time to plant is because you get good deals on plants like this 50% off of these asparagus plants. I have Jersey Knight and Mary Washington and I got the fruit trees for 20% off. So your selection is limited in the fall but you can get some good deals. The last plant I'm planting is this mango tango. It's an anise hyssop. I just love the smell of the hyssops and it is medicinal so it belongs in this garden. And I do the same formula for all the plants as the trees, just in smaller proportions of course. I know nothing about garlic varieties, so this was the last one in the bin and there was others in other bins. So I figured, well, if this is the last one, it must mean that it's good if everybody's taking them. So it's Bogotire. Bogotire? Anyway, let me know in the comments what your favorite type of garlic is. All I know is that I want to plant it around the trees, each tree, to help keep deer and rodents and whatever else away. When I first started gardening this raw piece of land, I said I was going to make it into a food forest, a permaculture food forest, and everything that I planted in here was going to be edible. Well, I've already changed my mind. I love bulbs too much, so I have to get planting daffodils and tulips. This is the last things that I'm planting in here, and everything else will be edible. The first planting is this Tahiti Narcissus. And all I put in each hole is some bone meal. Next is an assortment of tulips. now is a long-acting assorted Narcissus. Now I'm doing the Angelique tulip. It's a double late tulip. And the Dutch master trumpet Narcissus. These are all beautiful bulbs. I'm very pleased. Then comes this secret perfume. It's a double early tulip and it looks spectacular. There's only six of them in a package. The last ones for this season is Lemon Beauty and Narcissus. Looks very special. So that ends my planting for this year. Tell me what you've planted in your garden this fall. However, I have some more projects I want to show you what I've been working on and something really exciting, at least for me. So come along. This is the garden that I did earlier this spring and I put mulch down in these wood chips and then inoculated with wine cap and I had a harvest of one mushroom this fall. But I'm hoping for more in the spring because this is the mycelium. All this white is all throughout here, so it's really taken off. 
Everything that I sift out of the dirt, I use pretty much. The bigger logs and roots I use to make biochar. Any rocks that I find, the medium ones go to line my pond here, and the bigger ones go to for my rock walls. And the little ones go in the driveway. Now, I have something else exciting to show you. If you will recall this spring, I inoculated a lot of mushroom spawns, so come and see this. These are oyster mushrooms, and we've been having a feast of them this fall. Both here and my blue oysters have given me abundant crops, and I'm so excited. And there's baby ones all the time. It's, they've lasted about two months. Keep coming. And because I got so inspired with how easy they are to grow, I inoculated 15 more totems with the blue oysters. And I did 14 totems of the pink oyster, which is a new variety for me. These logs are massive. So I only got 14 totems, but that's fine. They're a warm loving mushroom, so I should be getting quite a nice harvest in the spring. So you'll have to stay tuned and watch and see what produces. Thanks so much for watching.